Hey everyone, welcome to another match of Simic Warp Control. Today we are playing Dice Factory. Someone thought, hey, let's build yet another deck that abuses a bunch of artifacts in some weird way. <laughs> uh, this should be really, really interesting. I don't get to play Dice Factory that much. So let's see how this goes. It's not going, not uh, starting off very well for me. Mulliganing down to five. But this five is, I guess, as good as it's going to get. So we see Surge Node come down, and of course, anytime you see a, an artifact like that come down in any format, you know that this deck is doing some stupid stuff. Now the real goal of Dice Factory is essentially to just generate a ton, a ton of mana, and just play big, big mana spells. Wonder Wonder just... Why don't you just play Tron? But I guess this is another cool way to do it. So I guess I can't fault him for trying. We draw Arbor Elf. Right now I feel like I just really need to get Eero down. Well, technically not down. Into the graveyard at least. We don't draw land. We get a second Euro. Um, might be prime target for Force of Negation fodder. So Tinker Mage is going to come down. They're going to go search for some artifacts. I feel that winning game one against Dice Factory is pretty important. So so here you see one of their main pieces. Their main piece is a mana generation. So this is something I would almost certainly, you know, counter, which is, which is what I did, of course. This is definitely not something I want resolving. Okay, drawing a second Tamiyo is really, really doo-doo at the moment, but yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so our opponent had a backup. Astral Cornucopia. By itself it does nothing, but of course you see Surge Node there. And you see their little tiny artifact creature there, and they're going to start throwing counters onto Astral Cornucopia. And it's going to start generating a ton of mana. There you go, look at that. It went from 0 to 4 in one turn. So now it's going to generate 6 mana and bring down Chalice of the Void for three. Isn't that interesting? So that's going to cut off Euro. It's also going to cut off Force of Negation. Not thrilled about that. We do get Tamiyo though. And at this point, I'm probably going to start digging for Time Warp. So plus one ing at the moment, digging for Time Warp probably makes sense. We do have a backup Tamiyo. So I could always minus, uh, minus three twice. We don't get any time warps this time, but that's fine. Again, we can, we can bring back two cards from our graveyard now and then cast another Tamiyo. So it really all depends on what exactly our opponent is going to be casting. Alright, so they're going to be doing some more shenanigans. And we are watchers. It's essentially it. We're basically just watchers. So again, they're loading up Astral Cornucopia here. And they're just going to keep doing their thing. power conduit and yeah i mean i guess there are people that didn't find this fun i don't see why i feel like someone's just like telling you oh dude you gotta try this out yeah let's see if we could actually pilot this super complicated deck that does something you could do more efficiently in another shell but i guess that's not fair that's not fair to say i'm gonna let this go through i do have a backup tamio that's not fair to say because I do brew and you know you can say that a lot about a lot of my decks so I believe here I tried to cast euro thinking that the escape cost replaces euros oh no I, I don't do it yet okay so I'm telling you in advance something stupid I'm gonna do later on so no time warp second try that's okay I just got rid of some cards I didn't necessarily want to draw into for the next four turns so 
I'm not completely worried about that. So here I thought I could cast Euro. But then I realized that escape doesn't change the CMC. So whoops. That was a waste. Luckily I didn't get rid of anything in the graveyard that I necessarily needed. But that was just kind of a meh turn. And he's right. It is just an alternate cost. I kind of bring farther there. And I'm going to concede because there's just no way. There's no, there's no real way to get out of that. Um, I think it's just better to go to game two. Wilt is pretty important here. And what's good about Wilt and Tamyo is that we can cast Wilt more than twice. Because we could always bring Wilt back uh, with Tamyo's minus three ability. Which I believe I do at some point in this match. Not much else we can bring in. So we just have to make some, we just have to make room essentially. Disdainful Stroke might be a good idea because they do cast large spells at some point. So we have to mulligan down to six. This six is keepable mostly because of wilt. Everflowing Chalice is another main piece of their mana generation game. But not time yet to counter it. So I'm play Mistress Bobble here, see what we're about to draw. And see if we want it. We Actually I think I keep it. I mean I don't actually mind drawing a third land at the moment, just so I could hit that third la mana drop. Land drop, I should say. So Surge Node comes down. I'm gonna let it go. Again, because of Wilt I can actually destroy Everflowing Child, so I'll just let them waste some of their counters. So, Voltaic Key is part of their infinite land, uh, infinite mana generation combo. And for this, I believe, I target Wilt. Uh, sorry, I, I cast Wilt and take care of Everflowing Chalice. In retrospect, I should have probably also counter Voltaic Key, because it could then be abused with some other mana generation, generation artifact they play. But I don't do that. Oh, I got rid of Surge Node. That's interesting. Probably should have taken care of Everflowing Chalice, so that was probably a mistake on my part. Uh, in retrospect, I should not have done that. I mean, Surge Node, yes, is, you know, filling up Everflowing Chalice with counters, but there's going to be plenty of other cards that they play that does that. So the key should have been wilting Everflowing Chalice. So note note the future self if I ever play Dice Factory again. Don't don't do what I just did. So I draw Utopia Sprawl here. Again, I'm kind of fumbling here. We didn't mulligan down, and we just didn't have the right draws. Next turn, we can bring down Tamio, And we can potentially bring back Wilt. We'll see what I end up doing. Right now, in theory, our opponent can slowly generate infinite mana. Because they can tap Everflowing Chalice, pay one on Voltaic Key, untap Everflowing Chalice. And they can do a bunch of stuff with that. I mean, okay, that's not infinite mana, but that's just a lot of mana. I believe it'll, it would take two Voltaic Keys to do, to do what needs to be done. So Chalice of the Void is going to come down again. They're putting a value of 3 on it. I think countering Chalice of the Void at this point is the right play. So another Voltaic Key comes down. And I believe now I'm going to counter that. Or I'm going to contemplate it. No, I let it resolve. So that's a risk. But right now, I mean, I don't want to get rid of Time Warp or Tamio, And that's essentially why I didn't do it. So it would make sense to play Utopia Sprawl first on the Breeding Pool that already has Utopia Sprawl on it. And then cast Tamiya. So 
There we go. Probably going to time warp. Yep. No time warp. But we see Tarmogoyf that goes to the graveyard. That's fine. We could always get it back. Right now, Wilt is probably going to be our target, though. Next turn, we'll minus three, get Wilt. Karn is going to force our hand here. x -Mage doesn't want to show the card art, but it's Karn. Karn is not a card we want to resolve. So we have no choice but to counter it. So our opponent generates seven mana for some reason, or some sum of mana. And they're going to blast zone. Oh, they're going to put counters on Blast Zone. Right, so they're going to take out Tamiyo next turn. So now would be the time to get back Wilt, essentially. Not a threat, but Wilt. Yep. And now would be the time to destroy Everflowing Chalice. There's basically nothing they can do there, and I mean, this was this was the turn we had to do it. Unfortunately, we don't have three blue mana available to us, so we can't counter anything at the moment. But our opponent is essentially dead in the water. Well, well, okay, well, kind of. They need a way to put counters on Everflowing Chalice. More than one. So we're okay at the moment. We get to live to see another day. Actually, Tamiyo... Uh, a Tamiyo draw is pretty good right now. We could actually minus three, get Wilt again, cast Wilt, destroy Everflowing Chalice again, and cast Tamiyo again. Uh, we could do a bunch of things. Let's see what we do here. I think getting Wilt would probably be right. Okay, so I go Time Warp. I go to Time Warp route, and I don't get it. But again, I get rid of some cards I didn't want, so... Our opponent is definitely not going to be able to resolve anything this turn. Or at least not something that I don't want to see. So Blast Zone is going to take out our Tamiyo. But that's okay. We have a backup Tamiyo. So we have some... We have some room to play there. So I'm going to get a land first. I'm going to play Tamiyo. And I'm going to get Wilt and get rid of Everflowing Chalice. I think that's the correct play. Oh, no, I'm going to get Tarmogoyf. Okay, wow. Okay, so in, at this point I was thinking, okay, I'm our opponent is not going to put any insane amount of counters on Everflowing Chalice this turn. So let's get Tarmogoyf first, start putting pressure on them, and then next turn we can, you know, the next couple of turns we can deal with Everflowing Chalice or whatever else they cast. So I think that's that's correct, actually. We, we have to remember that we are a control deck here as well. So we have, you know, we have Force of Negation, we have Archmage's Charm, we get Time Warp. All right, so that hit. Um, you know, we have many lines of play. So I think actually getting Time Warp was probably the smart move there. I felt that we were just kind of stalling in terms of threats, and I think our opponent need needed to sweat a bit more than they were already. They probably weren't sweating, but now with a 6 f and Tarmogoyf, they're definitely sweating. So we call for Time Warp. We don't get it. We could cast Euro. That may elicit a concession, but we'll see. So Euro comes down. We draw no land, but that's okay. We have Archmage's Charm Mana, and I don't think our opponent can get anything at this point. Nothing is going to resolve, and I think we have them within killing distance. Yep, that's what I thought. Alright, so I think we did a lot better that game, even though I think I could have been a bit more efficient. It's kind of interesting to see my decisions, you know, several days after making them. But I think the correct, I mean, I did do the correct play there. And I should always trust Kev in the hot seat as opposed to Kev who's commentating after. Um, you know, getting that threat when I did was probably the right call. 
So we are going to Melgan down. Uh, this hand is better and keepable. We have Wilt again, which is awesome. We have Tamiyo. We have Utopia Sprawl, which is going to accelerate us into our turn two and three spells. Mystic Sanctuary is uh, whatever for now. It's not going to be doing anything useful for us. There we go. Ghost Quarter comes down. Not happy to see Ghost Quarter there. Just going to get out of the forest. Although, in retrospect, I should have just gone on an island, but whatever. We'll play our Tarmogoyf, which is currently a 2 3. Core Tapper will resolve, obviously. Mishra's Bobble is not bad. Make our Tarmogoyf a 3 4. Four or five in this case. So so far good so far good. We've wilted away their astral cornucopia. Tinker Mage is gonna resolve. They're gonna go get some artifact that they need. Okay, there we go. Another one. And they will most likely get some counters onto it. There we go. Ceravisions, good for you. Alright. Cool, it's our turn. So we draw another Mystic Sanctuary. This is exactly why I don't like playing these types of cards. Okay, I would have much rather have had four mana right now, but I can't because it's going to come in tapped. This is why I don't play Mystic Sanctuary. <laughs> okay. Um, this is why I rarely play any land that I have no choice but for it to come in untapped in certain situations. I try and reduce that as much as possible, and here is a great example of why. I wanted to play Tamiyo that turn, and I couldn't because I couldn't meet Mystic Sanctuary's requirements. So the bonus that I may get sometimes in Mystic Sanctuary is not worth these kinds of plays. And now Karn comes down, can't do anything. I mean, even if I wanted to just play my Arbor Elf that turn and keep mana up for Archmage's Charm, which could have, which could have countered this Karn, now I can't. So I'm just venting here for all of you that... Uh, wonder why I don't necessarily go to this, these types of lands in my brews. It's because of this. I just I don't feel like they the lands give me enough value for all the crappy plays that they put that they force me to do sometimes or oftentimes. Grathurger's Cage is gonna come down. It's really gonna only stop Euro. It's not gonna stop Tamio in any way, shape or form. Because we're not we're not casting anything from the graveyard. So I'm pretty happy about that. So we can do Tamiyo this turn. Probably will. We can kill off Karn. And we can start digging for Time Warp. Time Warp it is. Let's see what we get. We get one. That's actually pretty good. That is pretty good because next turn we can start some of those shenanigans. So I am happy with that. As long as they don't win this turn, which they won't, we can do, start doing some pretty cool stuff and end the game really, really quick, especially with a 7 8 Tarmogoyf. So let's see what they pull out. They'll take key. Surge node. They're vomiting out their hand again. But I don't think. They're going to be doing much this turn. Unless they could get a big... A big creature or... Planeswalker down. I, I don't think they will, though. Walking Ballista would be bad news. But again, it depends how big it gets. Alright, now they got six. So another Karn comes down. They are going to search again for another friggin' artifact... And their sideboard. Let's see what they go get. Chalice of the Void. Good for them. What are going to put Chalice of the Void down for one? 
not really a problem. This is not a deck that necessarily falls to Chalice on one. Uh, although it would almost certainly slow us down. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now they're going to put Chalice down for something much more than one. Alright, let's see what. Two. Alright. Tarmogoyf. Alright. That's fair. They don't want us to get another Tarmogoyf, but I don't think it's really going to matter here. So, I'm almost certainly time warping. And I guess the question is, can we just kill them? Can we just kill them and not have to worry about anything else? Not have to worry about taking out that Karn. Now, if we do plus one again and look for Time Warp, that might help. So I go for Tarmogoyf here like an idiot. And I forget that, of course, <laughs> Chalice of the Void is there. So, uh, yeah, that was a waste. So we are going to Time Warp instead. <laughs> and pretend I didn't do that. All right, just a little weird sequencing here. So yeah, that was a mistake. Completely a dummy move on my part. Luckily, it didn't cost me the game. Oops. All right, just that was a spoiler alert. So we're going to time warp here. And... Going to get an extra turn. And we are going to go in again. The Sandville Stroke is actually pretty good. Time warp. If we get another time warp here, it's basically the game over. Yep, there we go. Perfect. So we're just going to attack in. There we go. Take out seven more life. Bring it down to two. And time warp. We could have probably won that turn if I had attacked with Arbor Elf, but whatever. Uh, if I attacked with Arbor Elf that turn and the turn before, but whatever. So we got him. All right, cool. So... Simic Warp Control, doing what it's supposed to do, getting extra turns and winning, and controlling our opponent and putting pressure when I'm not being an idiot and doing misplays. So, I hope you enjoyed that match. I think it was pretty good. Dice Factory is not something I play against often, and uh, thank God. Uh, it's just not a fun deck to play against. It's uh, almost as bad as Lantern Control. Uh, and, you know, Lantern Control is almost as bad as Dredge. So, yeah. That was good. Oh, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, even if it's a fringe weird deck that we're playing against, uh, Simic Warp Control can deal with it, and that's always a good sign in my books. If you enjoyed this match, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content in general, please subscribe, hit the little notification bell, follow me on Twitter. Uh, all of that really, really helps me out. I really appreciate your support. You guys have been great so far. Uh, my Patreon is also slowly growing. That's also awesome. Thank you for everyone supporting me on there. Thanks, and have a good one.